ping. 27. Oh, oh. But I'd, uh, I didn't buy these, actually. Most manufacturers state that they shouldn't be running off a spurred socket. <laughs> Spinker scared Ryan then. Welcome back. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's have a look at what we're doing. Summer house, these are by far, by far my favourite jobs to do. Uh well it's right up at the top of the list anyway, I just love doing them. Be nicer if it was a, a nicer day. Nice and wet, but it's not too bad. Let's have a look what we're doing. Um we're gonna do this is for someone who caught us off YouTube actually and he saw how we did the conduit on the external walls where no one sees it really because it's round the outside and round the back where where you're not really going to see it so we try and keep it to a minimum on the inside because obviously there's nothing else you can do that's like a finished wall so uh, yeah so we're going to get five sockets in this one one two three four over in that corner and five is going to be up on this light on the top of this lip for a projector to go over there uh, and then we've just got a center light consume unit and light switch going there now oh, the rain's picking up a bit i've got a few little uh products to show you um <coughs> that i've been sent that i'm gonna try and use first one i already love it anyway i think it's great is that laser level green laser and it's well cheap enough for anyone to buy it does a 360 circle which is a uh, handy for places like this because obviously we just we can get all the sockets at the same height all the way around it was a 360 circle and then it does the 180 line you can change that so it's like uh, just one or the other and if you're a plumber you can you can actually have it on a slope and it'll stay like on the slope for you so if you're following the plumber's number one rule shh, flows downhill you can run your pipes like that um, so yeah that's a belting little laser and one of the other things that I do like about it is the the self leveling bit in the middle it locks in position when you turn it off so it's not rattling about like the old DeWalt one is. Second little thing that I've been sent is this little uh, multimeter. I was a bit skeptical at first, but it's actually pretty cool from what I've used. I'll show it you throughout. And if I like it and I think it's of use to anyone, I'll put a link in the description where you can go and get one because I know they're cheap enough, they're like 40 quid. Um, but it does do a lot of stuff. You know, all, all the stuff that a, a multimeter does. Uh, it also is a non-contact voltage detector, so you know, like a like your fluke pens. It's it's also one of them. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll have a look at that, and I'll show you. And I'll, again, if I, if I think it's of any use to anyone, I'll put the link in the description. All this stuff, like the the um, the capacitor stuff and all that. Obviously, that's not really something we'd use. But if you're into electronics, that's the kind of stuff you want. But we'll use the voltage voltage detection and stuff like that. So. What else have I got to show you that you've not already seen? These look skewed away from the DeWalt. I won them on, on Instagram with uh, a company called Glasgow Rewires. And if you don't follow them on Instagram, just go and have a look at them because like, he's absolutely mental. He can rewire houses in a day and he's just to a very good standard as well and uh, just does that day in, day out. So yeah, we won these. Beasts. So yeah, I'll put a link for his Instagram in the, in the comments as well. Go and have a look at him because uh, his company is absolutely insane. Right, let's, uh, let's get started. What we're gonna do first, we're going to drill out through the center of all our sockets first. Um, so we're going to drill an hole in the middle of that. We're going to put one of these bell ends. That's the name of them, or bell connectors. Through the back of that, through the wall. 
um, <clears throat> and we're going to conduit the outside. We're going to come up the back into a whisker box on the outside um, and that'll come into the rear rear entry of the consumer unit and the armoured cable feed will also go into that whisker box and come in. So that's the plan. It's a big cable run. It's uh, right around the perimeter, all the way. It's a, it's a big, I think we've got about 38 metres. And the price of that cable nearly knocked me over. In fact, when I, got, when I quoted the job, um, I got a quote for that length of cable, for the armoured cable, and then about a week later when I actually bought it, it had gone up 40 quid in price just in that week. So here's what I was saying about these little bell connectors. So they just sit, sit in the back of the box like that, and then <laughs> go straight, sit in that hole. And sit like that. It's a nice hole then to go through the wall with. Obviously we need to fix that to the wall. Oh, oh Jesus, just went for the little roll. It's got one there, that one's a metre and a half from that one, that's what the customer's asked for, and then that's in that corner. And we've just got one more to go over there in that corner. So, yeah, I was just showing you those connectors. So, uh, Ryan's just making a mess round here. I'm joking. Yeah, so, this is basically tubing the sockets, but from the outside. Um, that's going to come up to the consumer unit. We're going to have a 407 whisker box there, which will also accept the uh, armoured cable. Um, the only issue we do have, usually, Sigmund laser coming in handy again. It's pretty good. This is where the issue is with this, is trying to get round that corner. What we have done in the past is copexed through bit of copex but we drilled it up tight to there and there but that left us with the tightest possible bend in there so this time we're going to do the same thing again <laughs> copex but uh, this time we're not going to drill it right in the corner what we're going to do is we have our tube running up and we'll just jump the copex up to, a, to sort of there and that gives it a bit of a radius to get round to that one on the inside and then same we'll jump out on obviously into there so yeah, don't make that mistake of drilling it right in the corner because it's an absolute nightmare to do. Um, what we'll probably do is we'll probably copex straight out the end of that now. Um, there's no point in trying to get a bit of tube just to do the last little bit when it's round the back of here and then it's pretty straightforward. Ryan wants the keys. Can he catch though? Oh, look, nail it! We nearly didn't, we nearly didn't. Oh, these are nice, aren't they? Just growing through the, through the stones around the back. Beautiful. I'm just pulling the armoured cable in quite, uh, basically just pull it in loose around all the obstacles around the fence. It's getting clipped direct. We're using those linear clips. Expert electrical have just dropped off for us very ever so kindly. So that runs all the way round. I'm just gonna run it all the way around the bottom. come across that back little alleyway there just along the floor probably suck it under it's not a, it's not like it's in use for anything uh, across there then wrap around the back all the way along the bottom so it'll blend in quite nicely all the way round through this lovely gap that was already there for us all the way along the bottom and up probably and into the consumer unit again we'll have to put a whisker box there most likely anyway time's getting his old singles ready start wiring some sockets linians fuse boxes in there as well i got this the other day it's like uh basically a cheap version of the uni light that i've got so i might put them head to head in a wee little competition what do you think about that is that an, of interest to anyone let us know in the comments see which one's better in all round goodness because i think that was only about 16 pound the uni light was maybe 55 
Yeah, take it off. Now my nose. I shouldn't have swore then, I'd have kept that in. <laughs> um, right, so have a look at that there. That, so that's what I meant by just copexing, just to get round that bend, because we're trying to go through the middle of that wood. Last time we done it, we done it stupidly right in the centre and it was just dead tight, so we'll have to do that and so I just jump off. So I'm just going to stick a box on there, like this, just for a bit of, just to basically transition from the copex over to the conduit, which we've got here just to get us over to that other socket. Plus it helps just pulling the cables around this bend from, from there to, to get right around, it's a bit awkward. We could use a coupler, but we're not going to. It's better having a box. So what I need to do, Ryan, is not stand on the wonderful flowers. Get the stop end for this last socket over here. Drill me all right where it goes. It's about there. Don't try this at all with your hands. Oh, I've got a little screwed ball so I'm flying around in the hand. Ping. So that goes on there. And then we just need the conduit in between. So, go and get us the screws, Ryan. Let's screw this on. We'll get the conduit in. Get it measured, get the conduit in there nice and easy. Let's just screw this box in. Plus, as the impact as well, it's at the end. Let's do this, just wrap it, just to, just to get the box lined up. And then we can just cut that now with the, uh, cold, the little tube cutter that I got from Screw Fix for about five pound. Move a little bit. Save so much time we're using it. Oh. Works a treat because it's flexible. And obviously, just get a fix in, in that one or two. Oh, we stood on the lovely flowers, Ryan. Oh, oh Ryan. Them. And that's that. Oh no, Ryan, the flowers. They're nice, them. God damn. You're a murderer, sure. Don't stand on that one. I'm in a little bit of a predicament here. The customer needed that socket in that, that close to that wall because he's got a, he's only got 150 mil to play with there because of some of this stuff. So the consumer unit is going directly above that. So, and plus it needs to go in line with that box on the outside so it can just tube straight up and straight into the back yeah but obviously i needed a little bit to bend it's hard to do this one handed but to get a 90 bend on a conduit to go across there to come over to a to a light switch so i was going to do a 90 bend in that conduit so does that make sense i was going to conduit um i'm going to tee box there or summit up, conduit up there over to the light and then down in the T to a switch and then across, across this way and bend into the consumer unit. I can't bend into the consumer unit because it's got to go so tight up to that wall. So my plan is to have that, open up that knockout there, put a bush or something on it have that just sat next to it and use that as my spacer while it's against the wall. Let me try and show you. Conjure it straight out the side like that and just have that sat there so it's not physically 
mechanically connected to the consumer unit it's just going to be sat next to it but with no gap so i think that's what i'm going to have to do to be able to keep the consumer unit where it needs to be because we've not got much much play because obviously it's got to go it's got to, it's got to be suitable to go straight with that because I, I don't want to have like bends everywhere because it just starts looking ridiculous um it needs to be straight with that for both the armored feed and the socket feed and then obviously straight with that and it's got to not touch that so it's got to be very precise so that's what i'm going to try and do i don't know why i keep saying so so voila right that is absolutely bang on absolutely bang on for the price of it there's no reason not to have a laser level it's a green laser as well so it's brighter than the red ones so i'll definitely be sticking a link for that in the description because uh, i think everyone can benefit from having one of those it's nice and small it comes in a tiny little case you know what i mean it's it's perfect little laser to have right let me just check my microphone is on yes it is right i'll just show you where we're at now we're just doing this conduit now what i was saying um <laughs> that laser's brilliant by the way um so obviously that's going to be my switch drop. What I'm, all, all I'm trying to do with the, the way I'm positioning things is avoid so many bends and kicks in the conduit because it starts looking a bit uh, in your face. So I'm trying to keep it quite just straight and as minimum as possible. That's why the switch is definitely going in that straight line rather than like I'm not going to kick it across just, just to get it closer to the door when there's not really much difference just little things like that um so yeah what we've done is i've just done a bend there follow that up there bend it through at and keep it at that lower height there so we can then get a stop end box on that and what i'll do is i'll just drill up and in to the back of the stop end basically just for to feed that light the reason i've done it on this side is so when you come into a summer house you should really only see this bit of conduit uh, and the light and obviously the sockets are just the sockets are now just on the wall so I'm basically just trying to keep it to a minimum um, yeah this this is what I was talking about with this I'm gonna have to just do that um, use that knockout on the side grommet strip or something like that and take that through because that has got to go basically in that spot because i'm dictated by that socket there i can't have the conduit for that socket running up and the armored crossing over it sort of thing well i could but it just looked ridiculous wouldn't it so yeah that's where we're at ryan's just buggered off to get another stop end box because i've run out um i'm gonna get that switch on and like i said we're going straight over there for a socket i'm possibly gonna have to do a kick on that just to get up above that but again i was governed by this section it may just sneak over and then i'll do the kick just to bring it up to put a socket in the back of there uh, hopefully it does because then you won't see the bend of the conduit not that there's an issue with conduit bends i just uh, try and keep them as little as possible um, all around the back now we're almost done we're just waiting for the feed which is just going to come across this fence come across the floor there i'm pointing camera so high up and up this is what i was talking about so that is going to go straight up into a whisker box on the back of here which i'll then go into the back of the board which is around there and then the armor is going to come up this side and into the same whisker box and straight into the back of the board that's why i was governed by that socket about where the conduit goes um, and I couldn't move that socket further up there because the customer's got his uh, his wine or his beer spirit rack or whatever and we only have 150 mil to play with so yeah that's that done conduit's done done around the sides all the holes are sealed up gaskets on them and, and stuff uh, and we whip around there with a bit of Colpex just to finish that bit off starting to look good Wholesalers have sent me the wrong size clips and it weren't Expert Electrical. Um, it was a different wholesalers for the, the proper armoured cleats. I know you can use linear clips on wood, but I just want to use the cleats there. I'm going to use linear clips around the brick. 
because they look a bit neater. Uh, on that black fence, it's not going to make a difference. Right, get this in, get that in, then we can start wiring, get the mains board up. Right, and uh, that's pretty much all of the conduit done other than this box. I'm just waiting for Ryan to get back. Um, I was lucky, it just skims, that's just gets there. It's just at the right height for everything. That was the perfect height. Obviously, it needed to be enough to get a little bend on that. Uh, any more and it would have been a millimetre too low. Uh, that's that socket, I need to screw that back here, I've just, I've just put that in. Uh, yeah, so literally a millimetre in any other direction, up, down, it just wouldn't have happened. Remember the seven Ps everyone. Proper planning and preparation prevents poor performance. So what do you think? Do you like what I've done? I'm trying to keep it as uh, as minimal as possible. I'm quite happy with that. That's I think that's uh, pretty good. Pretty good. What do you call it? A multimeter. But I'm gonna do a bit of voltage testing and try the um, the non-contact voltage thing. It's like a little smartphone. That's what it's like. It's like an an iPhone size. It's quite like it. You know, it's it's got all good features built in. I'll show it you anyway when we get some power on in here. Right, excuse the awkward angles. I'm uh, currently in a loft. I did say doing that summer house that I'd show you this um, Kai Wheat's little multifunction tester thing, uh, whatever you call it, multimeter. But on that summer house, it's not really a good place to be showing it you in sort of a real life situation. So um, on to the next job, and I'm going to show it you right now. What we're doing basically, we're this is the tester bag, uh, box, case, whatever. We're extending a ring main, so that's a ring main, and uh, we're extending it to add another socket, a single, uh, a double socket. Um, I could just spur off, but I'm not. I'm, I'm extending the ring. Um, so let me try and get a good angle of the tester. It's like a little phone. It comes in a protective case. You can take it off if you wanted to. It's currently set to. It was on auto. So you can change it to auto, which means it's on that smart select. So if, <coughs> depending on what you do with the tester, then it will uh, select the right setting for you anyway. But we want it on auto, so that'll detect. That's a voltage, voltage, uh, resistance, continuity, capacitance, or whatever that or diode check, whatever they are. Like I say, it's probably good for people who do a bit of electronics. Um, but this is what I like, the non-contact voltage detector. So you see there's a little green LED now at the top. And as I go near a cable, it goes red. Starts beeping. So what I'm gonna do, leave that there a minute. And also this is not an instructional video. Don't copy what I'm doing. Uh, that's my disclaimer. Don't be doing this. This isn't the right way to do things. What I'm going to do is ring Ryan to turn the circuit off and uh, I'm going to make sure that those cables turn off using that non-contact detector before we cut into them. So, uh, let's give Ryan a quick call now. Hello, sir. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Could you... Um, do us a favour, turn off the circuit marked house sockets. Right, so, as you just seen, that's not really confirming anything's going off. Oh, actually, it's gone green now. Right, so turn, turn them back on, Ryan. Yeah, it's gone red again. So turn everything on, Ryan, all of it, everything. Right, now my flute's not picking anything up. <laughs> well, this is an epic fail. Oh, we are. Green, turn it back on. And off. And on. 
and off. Is that off? Seems to be working right now. No, we'll go and check in a socket properly. So the continuity, and what's good is it tells you which ports of the four to plug your test leads in for the specific test you've selected. So we're getting continuity there, and then we've got the bell test, which is obviously good for belling out cables. It's quite handy to have in your bag, to be fair. Live earth neutral. Neutral, give us a bell on the neutral. There we go. So yeah, it's uh, it's handy for stuff like that, belling out cables and uh, whatnot. Is because it's so cheap. I'll stick a link in the description. If you're using it for belling out cables, uh, the non-contact voltage thing is not bad. You know, it's worth having in your bag. It's a uh, it's an handy little device, I suppose, and it's quite. It does look quite cool. So I'm uh, signing off because I'm sweating up here. I'm gonna get this all sorted and staple them in, but that weren't the purpose of this footage, so. Right, um, <coughs> Ryan's just getting a ZS on this, so this is the socket we've just added, basically. We've added it onto the ring because it's for a hot tub, and even though you can spur off sockets and just add another 13 amp socket, most manufacturers state that they shouldn't be running off a spurred socket, in case anyone didn't know. So, even though we all know it'll be fine, um, you can't knowingly go against the manufacturer's instructions, so we've added it to the ring. Ryan's just going to do a, get it on too low, ZS at this socket. Go on, you get that ZS, just for the minor work certificate. And then, <coughs> give, we'll give this a go on the little voltage indication on the Kai Wheats swap here. Right, you keep this, I'll keep that one. So it's already set to, it's on the smart function, so it's on auto, so it'll select what whatever it detects. It shows you where to plug them in, so just go on like, say the live and the earth. And it's detected that it's voltage, so it's gone to the voltage indication. And we're getting 242 and 50.1 hertz. And let's try the mega, see what the mega says we're getting. I'm not saying that the mega's any better. I'm not saying I believe the mega more than I believe the Kai Wheats. 243 and 50.1 hertz, pretty much exactly the same then. It's good for belling out cables, it's, it's small enough to just leave in your bag, you can throw it in your bag, throw it in your pocket, it's tiny, it's handy. And if you're into electronic stuff, circuit boards and all that, I imagine it comes in even more handy. Right, that's it from this job, we yeah, got stuff to do. Yeah. This is the light fitting that we're using, it's like a wooden one, so it suits the, suits the summer house, it's going to look really nice that when it's up. Right, uh, Ryan's just finishing off the lights. I'm just prepping this. I've put some grommet. I couldn't find a bush, a 40 mil one in the van, so I've used this grommet strip. It's the good stuff. It's the one that's metal lined inside. Um, inside, it's got like a metal lining, so it holds its shape. It's the good solid stuff. Nice, nice bit of grommet strip on that. That's just going to butt up to the side of that, basically, like so. Uh, obviously we've got a grommet strip on the back, that's falling off, let me just sort that out. Um, in fact I might just put some of that on the back. Right, that's going to be us done for today. Um, come to a bit of a, a standstill. All second fixed inside except the board. Uh, well, Ryan's just finishing that last socket off now. Um, lights in. Bit of conduit on the show there, but that's not a lot. And the rest is outside. We've not finished this armoured. Don't know if I've already explained why. Expert Electrical, bless them, brought me three different sizes of linear and clip to try on the armoured. And it was it was a smaller size. Uh, it's not their fault. I asked, for, I asked for those three sizes, but it's actually a smaller size. So they're coming again tomorrow, which is why we can't finish cleating that. So, my other wholesalers sent me the wrong clips to do across the fence. Uh, he sent me the wrong size cleats, and uh, we've not got the linear clips, so basically that armoured can't do anything. So tomorrow, we've got to go and look at a faulty shower now, which you're not going to see. But yeah, so far so good. And we're back, it's morning, and... Uh, Customer reminded me last night before we left that I was meant to put an outside socket here and I completely forgot. My fault. So I've just been 
I was trying to get the uh well you won't be able to aim them out like that. I was trying to get the scroll mode socket that I usually use but can't get one, can't find any, there's none in stock where I usually go. Uh, so I've got the Knightsbridge one, black one, just a nice looking socket to be fair. Um, so we've got that. So what we're gonna do, the plan was originally to <coughs> use that basically as that box, as the 90 box. Uh, but that'll just be a bit of a a pain for anyone in the future who needs to change the socket if they should they'd have to find the same socket to fit the conduits and uh, obviously you got to pull cables in and out so what I'm going to do I'm going to cut a T into that and just tee up just stick it there just tee up to it that way that way if you, in the future you can change it dead easy um, and then there's no conduit going straight in the top which I try not to do anyway it goes in the bottom So what we've got to do, disconnect that socket on the inside, pull the cable back that way just so we don't cut it, cut in the tube, stick a T-box in, stick that in, and we're done. Right, so this side, we're a bit uh, stuck at the minute because we're just still waiting on um, Expert Electrical to come and drop some different linear clips up for us. So what we're going to do, straight out the back of the uh, consumer unit, with this armoured, Gonna gland it into this somewhere about there, wherever it is, the board, and uh, come straight out the back and clip along. But because we're waiting, we can't really do anything. I'm just gonna gland this into this box now and get it in there, and then we're just hopefully they'll be here by then. The legends. If uh, the guy who owns a, uh, Expert Electrical is watching this video, I do appreciate that you've done this for me twice already and I know it was my fault thank you very much just going to be using them storms storm glands The boys from Expert Electrical are here. Right, Expert Electrical have just dropped off the, the right size linear clips. That was my fault. Quick one for you, Expert Electrical. Uh, you need to teach your drivers not to turn his back on me when there's pens in sight, look. Anyone want a pen? Five pound each. Let us know. So this is the uh, the last bit that we're clipping in. We're not using linians here. We're using the uh, proper cleats just because it's on the fence. Um, I know you can use linian clips on wood, but they're a bit hard to get out should this fence be changed in future. So basically just our cleats. I use them round-headed screws on armoured cleats just because 
if anyone knows, which you do, uh, normal screws, they just sink right into the cleat and they're a bit, bit of a pain, you need to use a little washer, whereas them, they don't sink in, they just stay nice. Uh, and they look better, I think. I think. So yeah, we just need to clip that across there and we're, we're up then. We're up to the, the summer house part. And that's the uh, Knightsbridge socket on. Uh, I think it looks nice because it's all in black as well, to be fair. Um, so that's what we did there. Makes it easy for changing it in future. I think it looks alright down the side there. Right, we've uh, pretty much done there. Now I've just connected up the consumer unit end in the house. I've had to add a non-RCD protected circuit to supply the shed off, just so obviously we've got RCBOs in here. Uh, luckily I've got the same brand, Buzzbar, same brand MCB, so it's all good. Ryan has just done this side of the consumer unit. He's done all right there, actually. We've not powered it up yet, it's all dead still. Um, do a bit of testing first, then we'll power it up, obviously, and do some more testing. Um, we've used the miniature RCBOs, I don't know why, they just sent me the miniature ones anyway. I think, this is what I gather, I don't know for certain, they didn't have the 20 amp in stock of the normal tall one, but they did have a 6. So instead of doing a silly thing and sending one of each, they sent me both miniatures so they match. So if that's correct, uh, thanks for that, Expert Electrical Supplies Limited. Uh, the reason we've got two cables coming out of that is because obviously we've got a, a radial running to the one socket over there and then the others go down and round. We could have very well come up and gone through and then back again, but what's the point in doing that? Just, it's just uh, making that a bit more full. Next one, we've got round the back here done, nearly. When I say nearly, we've just got another little trick or tip that we've got going on. I think this looks all right, to be fair now. I think I've shown you this already, but yeah, there's the whisker, storm gland. Next one is these screw heads. They're the only thing that you can see that stand out and they do bug me a little bit when everything's black. So, we've got a paint pen. I usually use a marker pen, but it's kind of like purple. So we've got a black paint pen. I'm just going to paint them. That was a tip off uh, Jay's a Spark on Instagram. So if you don't follow him, go and have a look. He's uh, definitely up there with one of the best, best uh, Instagram accounts for electrical stuff, in my humble opinion. It's even got a little little ball bearing in there, get her uh, paint flowing. Jay, this better be a black pen you sent me a link to. It's not white, is it? Jesus. Come on then, here we go, here we go. Got a bit of paint flowing now. So yeah, this is uh, for metal as well. Oh, that's better, isn't it? It's a better pen. Like a Sharpie, it's like a purple colour, isn't it, when it uh, starts drying. Look at that. Not the neatest, am I, but looks better, doesn't it? Paint pens, eh? Quite like that. So yeah, big up you, Jay the Spark. Just doing uh, the last bit of testing, nah. So I've had to fill the certificate out on my phone because I forgot to bring the laptop. So, RCD test, 38.5, and a ramp test right on. Let's do a ramp test and fill that in. Twenty-seven. Oh, oh, so close. Twenty-six. One of two hundred. But we've tidied up everything in there. We're all labelled up inside. All done in there. Tested. Certified. 
certificate sent over to the customer. Um, let's say the armoured cable runs along that fence in normal cleats, then we jump over to linear clips just for this section because I think it just looks better. I think it looks nice, nice and tidy with linear clips. Um, and then we run right around this, right around the bottom just to keep it pretty hidden. This is a 10mm armoured by the way. Um, and it runs runs along and it runs up into the back of this consumer unit. Customer asked for the grey box, we did have both black and grey. He chose the grey because he's just going to paint over that bit of cable yeah, to sort of blend it in a little bit. So that's us done for another job and um, we're so we are at the minute we're pretty close to the 5,000 subscribers so um, as soon as we hit that we're giving away those tools so just uh, do us a little favor subscribe to Z channel and we'll see you on the next one peace